Hey guys, and welcome back to another Mansion 4 tutorial. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to make a secret door in which this one is a bookshelf, so we can open the bookshelf by pulling back this book, and it will open to reveal a secret door, which is just a doorway through this wall here. So this is what we'll be making today. The textures obviously aren't too great. These are just two different models, which I very quickly made in Blender, because I needed the axis points to be perfect as well. So you'd probably want to either make your own or find some which are correct as well. This is just what I've made to use as an example very quickly, not great. I'm focusing more on the programming and functionality side of it rather than how it looks. I should also mention as well that for the axis points, I said you needed them to be correct, which is why I made my own models. For the door or the bookshelf, you want the axis point to be anywhere on one of the sides. So you'd want it to be on the left hand side or the right hand side here, just so that we can open it correctly while we're rotating it. So I have mine in the bottom corner here, so we'll just rotate around like so. And then for the book, you'd want it to be on the bottom side here. So it's rotating like this. So I have the origin point or the axis point where it rotates there. So it will rotate as if you're pulling it back from the top. So just make sure that when you make or use any mesh, you have the axis points correct there. So let me get in and show you what this looks like. So we can get in, I'll go to first person. We're gonna press E or whatever button you like. You see we have a line trace. If this hits anywhere on the bookshelf, nothing will happen but we need to hit this one specific book. So as well, you can obviously, you'll have more books on here. So you not just this one, so the player doesn't know immediately, you'll have loads of books. And then once they hit the specific one that you want it to open, it will pull back like that and the door will open like so, and we can walk through. Now you can either keep it so it's always open or you can make it so the player can close it as well, just by hitting the book again and then we'll close like so. So like I say, this is what we've been making today. So let me delete this code and I'll show you how I've done it. So what you want to do first is you want to import the different static meshes that we have. So again, you'll probably have the bookshelf, a load of books, or the bookshelf and a load of books in one, and then our special book. And the special book is the one that we want to pull back. So you want to make sure that the bookshelf and this one specific book are two separate meshes. However, the rest of the books can be in the bookshelf as well. Once you've done that, we're going to open up our bookshelf static mesh and just change its collision to be use complex collision as simple so that it's not just a simple box collision around it, it goes in here as well so we can select the book that we want and then we'll close that like so. Next we're going to create our door blueprint so we're going to right click, go to blueprint class, again actor and I'm just going to name this one bookshelf bp and we'll open it up straight away like so. Once we're in here we're just going to minimize this slightly like so and select our bookshelf and special book or just all of your static meshes, go back in here add a component, add static mesh, multiple assets, and then we have that in here. You want to make sure that everything is parented to the bookshelf so that when we move the bookshelf, the books move with it, as you can see down there. Now what I want to do is I'm just going to move this so it's centered like that. However, that's not necessary. I just like to do that. And then I'm going to move this book to be where I want it to be. So if I disable snapping, I want it to be on this shelf here. It really doesn't matter where you have it. You can just put it absolutely wherever you like. But this is where I want it to be, so the player has to hit this book here. And that is the visual part of it set up. Again, making sure your books are parented to the bookshelf, so when the bookshelf moves and opens, the books go with it. Then we're going to set up some variables. So we're going to hit a plus variable down here, I'm going to name this one book in, and I'm going to make it a float. And this value is going to be where it is on the Y rotation here, so on the pitch. We're rotating it on the Y, because that's how we want it to open, we're going to pull it back like that. So we're going to rotate it on the Y. So when it's in, like so, it's a value of zero. So we compile and leave that at zero. We're going to need plus variable again, name this one book out, compile, and we'll see where this one goes. So if we hit E, rotate it on the Y, I want it to go out to there, which is 30. So we're going to change this value to be 30. And then we're going to hit plus variable again, name this one door closed or bookshelf closed, anything you like. Compile, and again, we'll leave this at zero, because if we select the door, the rotation on the Z this time, because we want to rotate it like this, is zero. And then hit plus variable again, door open, and we'll open this to where we want. I want it to open this far, so that's 100. So I'll set the variable to 100. Compile, set it there. So I hope that makes sense as to why we're doing that. We're going to use those later on. These are just the values that we want to move the book and door to when we are opening it, or triggering the sequence of opening the secret door. And once we've done that, we can go over to the event graph. In here we can delete these three events, I'm going to right click, and add a custom event, I'm going to name this one open slash close door, or if you only want it to be open you can just name it open door, the name doesn't really matter too much. 
And after this, we're going to hold on O and left click to get a do once so that the player can't spam the door so it doesn't break. Once it's starting to open, it's then opening. Now with the completed of this, we're going to get a flip-flop. Now if you don't want to be able to close the door, you don't need to get this part, but the flip-flop will allow us to open and close. So if you want to do that, do that. So out of A now, we're going to get add timeline, and this is going to open the door. So do this part as well if you don't want to close it either. And I'm just going to name this one open track. And make sure this goes from play from start, not play. I'm going to double click to open this up. In here, I'm going to set the length to be three seconds, as I want it to take three seconds for the whole thing to take place. So that includes pulling back the book and opening the door or the bookshelf. So set this to be as long as you want, but I want it to be three seconds. So I'm going to add a float track here and name this one book track, like so. It's because you want to pull back the book first. So I'm going to right click on the graph here and add key to curve float, time of zero, value of zero. Right click, add key, time of 0.5 and a value of one. So 0.5 seconds in, the book is been pulled all the way out. Right click, add key, time of one, value of zero. So it's gonna take one second for the book to be pulled out and put back into place. And that is all we need to do for the book. Now we're gonna add another flow track, name this one door track or bookshelf track, anything like that. I'm gonna right click, add key. This time, the time is starting where the book ended. So that's a time of one and a value of zero. And right click, add key time of three because I want it to go all the way to the end and a value of one. So what it's going to do is pull the book back and put it back in and then open the door. So we can compile and close that timeline. Now you can see we have the book and door tracks here. So we're going to be using those. So we're going to right click, get a LERP and we just want a normal LERP under float there. Plugging the alpha into the book track there as the alpha is going to go between the two values of A and B. A and B want to be our book in and book out. So A will be book in as that's where we're starting and B will be book out as that's where we want it to end up. And obviously go back to book in, which we just set up in the timeline. And to actually move the book, what we want to do is we want to drag and drop a reference to our special book here. Out of this, we're going to set relative rotation, plugging that into the update of the timeline. So every time the timeline updates, it's going to be moving the book for when we want it to, dependent on the book track there. Right click in your rotation and split the structure pin. The return value wants to go into the Y as we are rotating it on the Y. If you're doing it on the X, then make sure you do that as well. Like I say, I'm rotating on the Y, and you can see that by default as well, the X is zero and the Z is minus 90. So I wanna make sure that in the event graph, I leave X as zero and change Z to minus 90 like so. And now this will work perfectly for us. So that's gonna do the book. Now let's do the door. So we're gonna duplicate the LERP and set relative rotation. So control C, control V, we're gonna put the rotation over here and now it's, it doesn't want to go in the Y it wants to go in the Z this time and the alpha now going to the door track and A is going to be door closed B is going to be door open so it's going to pull back the book and open the door we can compile that although so, sorry we also need to set this to be our bookshelf so set relative rotation target is bookshelf compile that and now I can just comment this to be open door or open bookshelf if that makes more sense for you and then also at the finished of the timeline, we want to go into the reset of the do once so that we can then reopen the door again or close it if we wanted to. So now if you don't want to be able to close the door, don't go into the reset, just leave it as it was before. This is just purely if you want to be able to open and close the door multiple times. So now let's set up closing it. So this is very simple. We're going to select the timeline, select one of the LERPs and select the set relative rotation for the bookshelf there. We're going to control C, control V to duplicate it down here. And what we're going to do is we're going to double click the timeline, delete the book track, and then with the door track, uh, we may as well actually delete that as well and just restart. We'll add another float track, naming this one door track like so, and we'll add a key to curve float time zero, value zero, and I'll also change the length to be two, as that is how long it took for the previous door to open. So add key, time of two, value of one. So this is just going to simply open or close, sorry, the door. So we compile, close the timeline. We want to go into reverse from end in the B as because this is going to open it, we want to reverse it so it closes. Update, again, goes into the set relative rotation there. Return value, once again, going into the Z. Now we can change the name of this timeline to door close. And if we compile, this should have fixed the error. Although, sorry, we're in the book track. We need to go into the door track, not the book track. Now we compile and that works perfectly for us. So we can select this, 
comment and have this one close door and again the finished wants to go into the reset of the do once up there so now this should open and close our door for us however you can see this is on an event here we need to call that custom event when we look and interact with the specific book so if we compile and save this we can minimize it and go to our character blueprint so i'm going to go to content third person bp blueprints third person character in here i'm just going to find some space and get an interact action mapping so you can just use the e keyword event but i'm going to create an action mapping so it's more efficient so i'm going to go to edit project settings once it loads we're going to go down to input down here and you can see i already have some here don't worry if you don't have these this is just from previous tutorials however you can see i have an interact one i'll delete that and re-add it so we can hit the plus action mapping here i'm going to name it interact i'm going to set this to be the e keyboard event you can set this to be any key you like for example e f left mouse button anything you want it really doesn't matter and the benefit of action mappings is we can set up multiple keys keys for different consoles and also key bindings so we're going to close the project settings there and back in this event graph we should be able to right click and get that interact action mapping we just made there to the action event there now with the press of this we want to get a line trace by channel and we're going to be doing this based on the camera so we're going to get our first person camera this can work in third person as well however it just looks a bit better in first but this does work in both first and third person out of your camera we're going to get world location and plug that into the start so we want to start this line trace wherever the player's camera is also out of the get world location we're going to get a vector plus a vector plugging that into the end of the line trace and this is to keep it going in a straight line however what we want to add to it is out of the camera again we're going to get the forward vector out of the return value of that we're going to get a vector multiplied by a float plugging that into the addition there this float value is how long you want the line trace to be I'm going to set it to value of 300 so it's 300 units long you can set that to absolutely whatever you like and so this is just going to get a line from the player's camera 300 units in front of us and you can have draw deeper type as for duration to test it however I don't need to do that that is just the red line you saw at the start after this we're going to hold down B left click to get a branch plugging the return value into the condition there so this is to see if we actually hit something out hit we're going to break hit result so if we do hit something we can see what it was we're going to open up the advanced settings there and out of hit actor we're going to cast to our blueprint we just made which for me was bookshelf BP plugging that into the true of the branch because we only want to see if we hit the bookshelf if we hit something so if we did hit the bookshelf it will work out the execution if we don't it'll be cast failed so we don't want to do anything but if we do we want to see if we hit the specific book we want so for that we're going to come out of hit component with the break hit result and get a component has tag plugging the return value of this into another branch like so that going into the execution of the cast there and this is because we want to see if it was a specific component so static mesh that we hit which is obviously our special book so to test this we need to add the tag so we're going to go back to our bookshelf bp select our special book here and i'm going to search for tag i'm going to add a component tag and name this one special book but you can name this absolutely whatever you like i'm going to select all Control c to copy it go back to our character blueprint and then in this component has tag i'm going to paste the tag in there so it's going to see if the bookshelf or the book or whatever we hit has this tag if it does it's going to open the door because that's what we want so to open the door we're going to come out of as bookshelf bp and call function open slash close door or whatever you named your custom event and plug that into the true there and now this is going to open and close our door when we are looking at the correct bookshelf so i'm just going to comment that as well so open close bookshelf door when looking at book we compile and save now we can actually minimize and hit play to test this after we've obviously placed it into our level so let's drag in the bookshelf bp there i'm going to scale it up a little bit to let's say 1.5 just make it a little bit bigger and place it into the position that i want it to be in so i want it to be here i think that's gonna be good for me so let's hit play to test this i'll go to first person you can see that i'm pressing e all around here nothing's happening even when i look at the bookshelf if i look at that book that book pulls back and the door opens like so and then we can walk through it like this walk back now if i look at the door again nothing happens but if i look at the book it should close however you saw that didn't quite work it just snapped into position however we can then open it again so let's look at why we can't close it it just snaps into position like so let's go in here with our bookshelf bp 
and I assume it's because we're reversing from end. Oh no, no, we didn't actually add in the variables into the lerp, so that's my bad. We need to make sure that we re-add them, it's because I forgot to select them down here. So all we want to do is A, it's going to be door closed, B, it's going to be door open, and now this should work for us. So if we hit play to test this again, we look everywhere, nothing happens, look at the book, the door is going to open, and if we look at the book again, the door should close perfectly like that. So that works great. So I think that'll be it for this video. We've done everything we want to do. We've set it up so we have this secret bookshelf doorway here. So we just have a normal bookshelf. And if we look at the correct book, which obviously you can have many books on here, but if you look at the correct one and press E, it's gonna pull back and the door will open and you can walk through into your hidden room that you have here. And you can walk back and you can close it again if you wanted to. So that works perfectly. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you find it helpful. And if you did, make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.